This board here is an I2S to SPDIF converter. So it takes in PCM signal in I2S format and as an output you get SPDIF. There's two options to choose from. Either you have the coaxial and TOS link or you have the AES XLR output. So why would you need a board like that? For example, my ADC, I have another video about. So this one is analog input to I2S. So you connect this one to that and you get SPDIF output. And the special feature of this I2S SPDIF converter is that it can also take two mono ADCs. So I could have here two ADCs running in mono. This one is I2S master, two slaves. These, these mono devices would send the same data in left and right channel. And this converter would then pick one for the left and the other one for the right channel. There are some limitations in this one because how it was designed to work with the ADC. So first of all, it's always I2S master. This one takes master clock in, or you can use the onboard oscillator and sends the I2S clocks out to the slave device, takes data back in. Your one dual jumper pin header here for selecting the, the sample rate. There are instructions on the back of the board. So basically, it, uh, the jumper chooses the ratio between master clock and uh, sample rate. So you can select 48, 96 or 192 kilohertz. So there is an onboard oscillator or you can use SMB connector for external master clock. Or if you use the onboard oscillator, you can also take SMB uh, for one of the outputs. So there is a, a clock splitter here. It's also, it has a transformer. So it's isolated whether you use optical toslink or the coaxial or the XLR connector. Let's have a look at the schematics. Heart of the device is TI DIT4192 digital audio transmitter, which basically does most of the hard work for us. It takes master clock in and sends a word clock and bit clock out, takes data inside. Most of the settings here are fixed, couldn't really offer perfect flexibility here because of the, the dual mono case that um, it needs to be master device. So this uh, example schematics now for dual mono, it's a slightly different population for the stereo input, but it's exactly the same PCB. Most of the components are the same. Here are the clocks. We have 24.576 megahertz master clock by default coming from the the onboard oscillator. Then we have a clock splitter here. Four clock outputs. One is, one is the optional SMB if you need it for something else in the system, and the other three goes go within this board. So master clock goes in here, and it also sends the same master clock out for the ADC one and two in this case. Clocks, water clock, bit clock, they are buffered because it's split into two and then buffered separately for both ADCs. And the small trick, what is done here is this MUX here. What it does is that we get two data streams coming in from ADC1 and ADC2. And in the case where my ADC port is used, so both are mono, but they send left and right, but it's the same data in left and right. So what this chip does here, that it picks the left channel from the ADC1 and right channel from ADC2. So it uses the frame clock to switch between the, the inputs. Output is here, SPDIF. We have a TOS link here, optical output. And then we have a transformer and an optional RCA or XLR connector. The resistors here are slightly different if you use RCA or XLR because the signal level is different. 
the level of this chip is, is very very high because it uses 5, 5 volts for the I.O. and it has a differential output. Power supply is very simple, just uh, take 3.3 from 5, 5 volts. 5 is also needed for this um, I.O. level. That's pretty much it. There's not much to show in terms of uh, test measurements on this device. Uh, it's a fully digital board, so it basically works or it doesn't work. I tried um, several I2S format combinations with uh, different outputs. Um, everything works with different sample rates, 48 to 192. I just wanted to show example of the data waveforms coming in. So this is um, APX. Uh, digital serial interface configuration. So this is basically if you have a stereo ADC or stereo, stereo whatever input device to this board. So this is a normal I2S, you have a bit clock, frame clock, then you have data, channel 1, channel 2. So if you use the dual mono case, you have two data lines. So it's basically four channel I2S, two data lines, channel 1, 2, 3, 4. But how it works here now that this board would actually pick channel 1 and channel 4. First channel from the first data line and then the second channel it takes from the second data line. And that's all for now. Drop a comment or check my website if you have any questions.